the light of the holy relationship. We are one. Welcome, mighty companions. Hey, I'm Earl Purdy. Welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles on Facebook Live. This class is, is primarily aimed at students of A Course in Miracles people who are already studying the Course in Miracles. Anyone's welcome to watch, but quite frankly, some of it might go right by you. Because like I said, I'm primarily aiming it at people who are studying A Course in Miracles. And I've been studying and teaching it for almost 40 years. And I'll tell you, it's awesome. Guess what? been together from the start. Tell me, can you hear it? Can you hear it? Tell me, can you feel it? Put your arms around it. Know that we are one. Yes, we are. Companions, welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. Hold up just a second. Just a little second. Welcome, 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 welcome to Hardcore Course in Miracles. We're going to be on the light. We're going to be on the light of the holy relationship in this evening's gathering. The light of the holy relationship. And the light of the holy relationship is on page 480. 
So in the text, go to page 480. In the text of A Course in Miracles, go to page 480. We're using the Foundation for Inner Peace version of A Course in Miracles. And we're on page 480. I want to completely thank you for tuning in to the Hardcore Course in Miracles class. We are going to jump right into this. Remember, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to welcome it. Some of it's going to be hard to believe. Some of it's going to be startling, hard to believe. This is not an analyzing group. My Hardcore Course in Miracles is absolutely not about analyzing the course. It's about hearing what we're being told. It's about hearing the message. So I'm a messenger. The Hardcore Course in Miracles, I want to let it come through me after 40 years of studying and teaching the Course in Miracles and show you how the Course in Miracles teaches a Course in Miracles. So we're going to be on page 480. And I'm going to share with you some of the Course in Miracles definitions of some of these words. For instance, uh, the light of the holy relationship. Well, one of the definitions of light that the Course gives is truth of the holy relationship. And another term it gives for holy is innocent and loving and beautiful. So we're talking about the light of the holy relationship is really the truth. The truth of the loving relationship. The truth of the innocent relationship. So we're going to talk about the light of the innocent relationship, the loving relationship, the light of the holy relationship. And the Course in Miracles says, read me slowly, do me slowly. And so I'm going to go very, very slow in the hardcore gathering. Uh, so we're in page 480. Okay, so we're in chapter 22, section 6. And the very first paragraph in chapter 22, section 6, the very first paragraph. Take a breath with me. This is going to be an experience. I want this to be an experience. So I want you to, those of you who want to, I want you to dive in this with me and follow along with me. Do you want freedom? Do you want freedom? Do you want freedom? Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Did you, do you want your mind to be free or do you want your body to be free? Do you want your mind to be free or do you want your body to be free? For both you cannot have. You cannot have what? You cannot have freedom of the body and freedom of the mind, according to the Course in Miracles. You cannot have freedom of the body and freedom of the mind. So the question is, do I want freedom of the body or do I want freedom of the mind? Do I want my mind to be free or do I want my body to be free? Because I can't have both of them free. According to the Course in Miracles, I cannot have a free body and a free mind. I cannot have a free body and a free mind. So the question is, do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Do you want your mind to be free or do you want your body to be free? Do you want your mind to be free or do you want your body to be free? I'm going to keep saying this for a minute. Do you want your mind to be free or do you want your body to be free? Because you can't have both. You cannot have your body free and your mind free. You can't have both of them. You got to have one or the other. So do you want your body to be free or do you want your mind to be free? Do you want your body to be free or do you want your mind to be free? Because you can't have both. You cannot have your body free and you cannot have your mind free and your body free. So the Course in Miracles says, which do you value? Which is your goal? Do you want your body to be free or do you want your mind to be free? For one you see as means the other end. So you're going to see one of them, either the body or your mind, as a means and you're either going to see the body or your mind as a goal. So you're either going to have the goal of 
<clears throat> free in your body and just focusing on your body being free or you're going to focus on having your mind being free. And the Course says one must serve the other and lead to its predominance, increasing its importance by diminishing its own importance. So if you're looking for freedom of the mind, you're going to use the body to serve freeing your mind, or you're going to use your mind to serve freeing your body. So either freeing your body is the most important thing and you're using your mind to figure out ways to free your body or you're using your body to free your mind. Like sitting here right now in the body, using your body to listen to this presentation that's trying to free you, that's you using your body to free yourself. You're using your body to free yourself. You're using your body to free your mind. So either you're going to use your body to free your mind or you're going to use your mind trying to constantly think of ways to free your body, constantly thinking about the money, constantly thinking about relationships, job, career, health, what's going on in the world. In other words, you're using your mind to focus on the body and things of the body or you're using your body to focus on things of the spirit or things of the mind. Means are going to serve the end. The means are going to serve the goal. And as the goal or the end is reached, the value of the means decreases. So what in the hell did that mean? Well, let me give you a simple example. Means serve the goal. Means serve the end. Let's say you have a flat tire. You take the jack out of the trunk of the car and you're so glad you got a jack in the trunk of the car and you use the jack to change the tire. See, your goal is to change the tire. So the means to change the tire, which is the jack, is very, very important to you. But as you change the tire with the jack and you achieve changing the tire, the jack diminishes in importance. The jack isn't so important to me the once the what? Tire has been changed. So the means to achieve a goal decreases in importance as you achieve the goal. The jack decreases in importance as you change the tire. So the Course is saying that at some point, the jack isn't going to be important to me at all because the tire has been changed. So the once you achieve your goal, whatever helped you achieve your goal has no value to you anymore. The once you achieve your goal, what, happens, what helps you reach your goal doesn't have a function anymore. So... Everybody yearns for freedom. Everybody tries to find freedom. No one but yearns for freedom. Everybody really yearns for freedom and tries to find it. No one but yearns for freedom and tries to find it. You know, what is the Course saying? You are yearning for freedom. That's what you really want. What you really want is freedom. What you really want is to be free. What you really want is to be free. And you are trying to find your freedom. No one but yearns for freedom and tries to find it. If you're following along with me, you know I'm teaching you directly from what's being said on the page. And we're on page 480. And we're in paragraph 1. All right. So, no one but yearns for freedom. So... You, you are yearning for freedom. You are yearning for freedom and you're trying to find freedom. Everyone is yearning for freedom in their own way. Everyone is yearning for freedom in their own way and trying to find freedom in their own way. So where will you seek for your freedom? He says he will seek for it. You will seek for your freedom where? Where you believe your freedom is. And can be found. You are going to look for your freedom where you believe your freedom is. That's where you're going to look for it. You're going to look for your freedom wherever you believe your freedom is. 
You're going to look for your freedom wherever you believe your freedom can be found. You're going to look for your happiness where you believe your happiness is. A person looks for their happiness where they believe their happiness is. And you're either going to believe your happiness is in the, the body or you're going to believe your happiness is in your mind or spirit. But the Course says you can't have both. And let me tell you, it's a part of me that absolutely does not want to hear that I can't have freedom of the body and freedom of the mind. There's a part of me that wants to believe that I can have freedom of the body and freedom of the mind. And this Course in Miracles is telling me that I can't have both because either one of my means or ends. In other words, I'm either going to use my mind to try to come up with ways to focus on my body and what my body wants and my body's freedom, or I'm going to use my body to free my mind. I'm going to use my body to study, to read, to become conscious, to meditate, to love. I'm going to use my spirit, which is my mind self. I'm going to use that um, I'm going to use that to love, so I'm going to use my body to help me love. I'm going to use my body to help me be a more loving being. Or I'm going to use my mind to try to figure out how to make my body the, the main thing, to, 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 to get freedom of the body, to focus in on what I think the body wants or needs. The Course in Miracles says you're going to either use your body to free your mind or you're going to try to use your mind to free your body. That is the choice. So you're going to either believe that what you want in your freedom is possible of the mind, a person is going to believe that freedom is possible of the mind, or a person is going to believe that freedom is possible of a body, and you know that a body is a limit. You know that a body is not unlimited. You know that the body is not unlimited. You know that the body is not unlimited. <clears throat> you already know that the body is not unlimited. So it is impossible for the body to be free because the body has limits. It's not possible for a body to be free because a body has limits. A body has limits. A body has limits about what it can do. A body has limits. And so there's only so much you can do in a body. So the body cannot be free. So... You're either going to believe that it's possible to free your mind and your thinking or you're going to believe it's possible to free your body and you will make the other serve your choice as a means to find your choice, which is another way of saying I'm either going to use my body to free my mind and my spirit and my heart or I'm going to use my, <clears throat> I'm going to use, I'm going to use my, body to free my mind or I'm going to be using my mind to figure out ways to free my body. That is what the first paragraph is saying. So let's hear that. Let's hear that. Let's hear that. This is this is powerful. Um, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm a messenger. I'm going to deliver this message. And I see the incredible comments that you all are making right now. That's right. Freedom, freedom in spirit. And these are some of the comments. Freedom in spirit. Happiness in God. Yes, Earl, part of me thought that when you started reading, but I am warming up to this. <clears throat> Can't have both the body goals and the spirit goals. I want to use my spirit and body for love. I always have. It's choosing priorities. The body is a limit in and of itself. I choose to prioritize the spirit so the body falls in line behind. That's exactly right. The older I get, the more I'm aware my body has limits. That's for sure. So this I love the comments. I love the comments. So here's a repetition of the first paragraph in the light of the holy relationship. Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. For both you cannot have. Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Do you want freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? So both you cannot have. Both you cannot have. Which do you value? Which is your goal? Freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? Because both you cannot have. Which do you value? Which is your goal? 
which is your goal because you're either going to use your body to free your mind and spirit or you're going to use your mind to focus all the time on what you think the body wants and the freedom of the body. Do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Because you can't have both. You can't have both. And if you reach the goals of the body, then you will diminish the power of your mind because the once you achieve the goal, you won't be using your mind anymore. So people use their mind to create physical goals. And then once they get the physical goal, they stop using their mind. I use my mind to get the house, but once I get the house, I stop using my mind. But if you want your body to be used for spirit, if you want your body to be used for spirit, just know you're yearning, you're yearning for freedom and you're trying to find freedom. That's what a person really wants. A person really wants freedom. What you really want is freedom. And you're seeking for your freedom where you believe your freedom is and can be found. You're seeking for your freedom where you believe your freedom is and where your freedom can be found. Everyone seeks for their happiness where they think their happiness is and where their happiness can be found. Everybody seeks for their happiness where they believe their happiness is and where they think their happiness can be found. Everybody, 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 everybody seeks for their happiness where they believe it is and where they believe it can be found. Do you know that you're going to either believe that your freedom is possible of your mind or you're going to believe that your freedom is possible of your body? You're going to believe that your freedom is possible through your mind or you're going to believe that your freedom is possible through the body. And you're going to make the other serve your choice as a means to find it. That means you're either going to use your body to free your mind or you're going to be using your mind to try to free your ego. Either you're going to be using your mind to try to free your body or you will be using your body to free your mind. That is what the first paragraph is saying to us. That is the first paragraph. Now the Courts of Miracles are going to tell us what's going to happen if you've chosen freedom of the body. Where freeing the body has been chosen, that means when, when it's all about you freeing your body, then you're going to use your mind as a means if you want to free your body, if all you think about is freeing your ego, if all you think about is freedom of the body, just all you think about is freedom of the body, if that's all a person thinks about is freedom of the body, they're going to use their mind as a means whose value lies in the mind's ability to contrive ways to achieve the body's freedom. What in the heck did that just say? When a person chooses freedom of the body, they just want to use their mind to come up with ways to achieve the body's freedom. When you just want freedom of the body, all you think about is how you can free yourself at a material level, as a, as a, at a physical level. When all you want to do is free your body, all you think about is how you can have what you want on a physical level. When you just want to free your body, a person is just only trying to focus on freedom of the body. And if a person focuses on freedom of the body then the mind is only as important as it allows you to come up with ways to free your body. You, if a person has chosen freedom of the body, they just use their mind to come up with ways to try to free their bodies. How can I free my body? All day long, I went to work. Why? Because I'm concerned about my body. I got to take care of my body. I have to house my body. I have to clothe my body. I've got, to, I've got to make sure my body has a relationship. I have to make sure my body has savings. I have to make sure that my body has a house to put my body in. I have to make sure that I have a car that I can put my body in. Everything I do is for the, oh, i got to make sure that nobody gets my partner's body. i got to also make sure nobody gets my body. It's all about the body. i got to feed the body. I have to clothe the body. I have to house the body. I have to wash the body. I have to feed the body. I have to walk the body. I have to take the body to school. If, if all you think about all day is something that has to do with the body, then freedom of your body is what you're focusing on, and you use your mind to try to come up with ways to free your body. Okay, that's, that's what happens when a person has chosen freedom of the body. They spend all their time trying to figure out how they're going to take care of the body, how they, what they're going to do with the body. And that's the value of the mind. The mind's value 
is only in how many ways can I come up with to take care of myself? How many ways can I come up with to feed my body? How's my body? What am I going to do to take care of my body? I'm, I want the freedom of my body. And so therefore, all I do is use my mind to come up with ways to free my body. Because that's where I believe my freedom is. That's where I believe my freedom can be found. And so I'm going to make my mind serve my body. I'm going to make my mind serve the desires of my body. Yet, freedom of the body has no meaning. It doesn't mean anything to try to free your body. Spending your time trying to free your body doesn't mean anything. Spending all your time being focused on the body does not mean anything. Freedom of the body does not mean anything. So whenever all you're doing is focusing on your body, all, when all you're doing is focusing on the body and something about the body, your mind is dedicated to serve, but your mind is dedicated to serve illusions false ideas and bodies. So the Course in Miracles defines an illusion as a false idea. The Course in Miracles also defines illusions as fears. The Course in Miracles also defines the illusions as bodies. So if the mind is dedicated to serve bodies, then the Course in Miracles just said to us that freedom of the body doesn't mean anything if your mind is dedicated to serve the body. Then freedom of the body doesn't mean anything if you are just focusing on serving the body. And it says this is a situation. What situation? A man dedicated to serve illusion. It says this is a situation so contradictory and so impossible that anyone who chooses this, which is what? Anyone who chooses to dedicate themselves to serve illusions, anyone who chooses freedom of the body, that's someone who has no idea of what's valuable. So who is a person that doesn't know what's valuable? A person that doesn't know what's valuable is a person that is completely focused on the body all the time and trying to free the body all the time and dealing with concerns around the body all the time. This is a person that has no idea of what's valuable if they think what's valuable is spending all their time trying to free the body. Anybody who is spending all of their time trying to free the body is a person who really doesn't know what's really valuable. Anybody that's spending all their time just focusing on the physical, just focusing on the material, that's a person that does not know what's really valuable. It's not the physical that's the most valuable thing. The most valuable thing is your spirit. The most valuable thing is your mind. The most valuable thing is your heart. That's what's eternal. That's what lasts. So the part of you that lasts, that's the part of you that's most important. The most important part of you is the part of you that never dies. So the Course in Miracles says, whoever choose, anyone who chooses this, a mind dedicated to serve illusions, a mind that's just trying to free the body, he says, this is a person, this is someone who doesn't have any idea of what's really valuable. So what I want to do in Hardcore Course in Miracles is I want to tell myself the truth. I'm going to, be, I'm going to tell the truth. And the truth is, I don't really know what's valuable because I do try to use my mind a lot to come up with freedom to come up with some way to free my body and to get me something that my body wants okay i spend all of my time trying to get i, I spend all i spend most of my time trying to uh manifest my physical desires i spend most of my time trying to manifest physical desires whether it's the physical desire for food clothing shelter or or relationships or sensuality sexuality money uh, I spend a lot of my time uh, trying to manifest physical things. I, I dedicate a lot of my mind to serve illusions. And I'm going to admit that so that I can be free. And the Course just told me that uh, it's impossible that anyone who chooses to just try to use their mind to free their body, that's somebody who has no idea of what is valuable. So instead of fighting with that, I'm just going to admit to myself that I don't really know what's valuable. That's it. I'm just going to tell the truth. I don't really know what's valuable. Then it says, even in this confusion, what confusion? The confusion of having no idea of what is valuable. I'm confused about what is valuable. He says, even in this confusion, so profound, it cannot be described. The Course in Miracles says, you guys are so confused that it can't even be described. You are more confused than can even be described. I can't even describe how confused you are. 
That's what the cause of miracles is telling us. You know what? I can't even you are you so dis, you so confused in some ways that I can't even describe how confused you are in some ways. But the course says, even in this confusion so profound it cannot be described, the Holy Spirit waits in gentle patience. So the Holy Spirit is God within you, the divine within you, your inner teacher, your loving right mind, the God within you. That is the Holy Spirit. And the Course in Miracles says, even if you are confused. What do you mean? Well, I don't really know what's valuable. I think that the body is more valuable. Things of the body and the body, I believe, are more valuable than things of the mind and things of the spirit. And so I've been using my mind to come up with ways to get me what I think my body wants, which means I don't really know what's really, really valuable. And even though I'm confused about what's really valuable, the Course in Miracles is telling me that love is waiting in gentle patience, that God is waiting in gentle patience, that, that, that God is with you, the Holy Spirit is with you, as certain of the outcome as the Holy Spirit is sure of his Creator's love. So even while you are confused and even while I am confused, it's like the love in us, the Holy Spirit is saying, you know what, I'm going to gently wait in patience because I know that no matter what Earl tries to do, I know that no matter how much he pursues power, money, fame, physical pleasure, all the things of the body, I know that the outcome is going to be that he is going to experience the love of God. He is going to experience a love beyond anything that he's ever experienced in his life. Even if he's confused, even if he spends all his time seeking after power, money, fame, specialness, and physical pleasure, even if he goes after everything that he thinks the body has to offer, uh, love, his teacher, the Holy Spirit, is gently waiting in patience, in patience because the Holy Spirit knows that no matter what you are confused about, the outcome is as sure as God's love. The outcome is going to be, you are going to be in perfect happiness. The outcome of everything that you're going through is that you're going to have complete happiness. The outcome of the result of everything you're going through right now is going to be you're experiencing God's love. The outcome of every single thing you're going through, that's what it says right here, the Holy Spirit, the loving right mind of God within you, waits in gentle patience, not regular patience, gentle patience as certain of the outcome. See, the Holy Spirit in you, the love in you, the love in you is certain about how things are going to turn out. The love in you knows that God loves you and that everything is going to turn out all right. Everything's going to turn out all right because the Holy Spirit in you is absolutely patient and the Holy Spirit in you is totally certain of the outcome as the Holy Spirit in you is absolutely certain of God's love. Hear that. Hear that. Even though a person might be confused, even though a person might be confused, even though a person can be so confused that you can't even describe how confused they are, the love in them, the God in them is waiting patiently because the God in them is absolutely certain that love is going to win, happiness is going to win, peace is going to win. The, the Holy Spirit in you, the love in you, that part of you that knows the truth, that part is patient because that part of you is certain that God loves you and that everything is going to turn out right, all right, loving, wonderful, peaceful. Everything is going to turn out all right, no matter what you're confused about, no matter what you have confusion about, no matter if you're using your mind all, the, all day long trying to figure out how to take care of your physical situation in your body, even if you're using your mind all day being concerned about one thing or another, even in this confusion that's so profound that it can't be described, God is waiting patiently inside of you and surrounding you, absolutely certain that things are going to turn out the way God wants things to turn out for you. And the Course in Miracles says, but the way that God wants things to turn out for you is that God's will for you is perfect happiness. God's will for you is perfect happiness because the Holy Spirit, 
who is your inner teacher, knows this mad decision. What mad decision? The mad decision to dedicate your mind to the ego. The mad decision to dedicate your mind to the illusion. The mad decision to dedicate your mind to separation. The mad decision to dedicate your mind to the freedom of the body. He says, the Holy Spirit knows this mad decision was made by you, one as dear to his creator as love is to itself. So even though you can make a mad decision, even though you can make a decision to focus your mind completely on the body and physical things all the time until you scare yourself and worry yourself, even though you, you can make this mad decision of separation, uh, you are still as dear to God as love is itself. You, you, you are still dear to your creator. Your creator absolutely loves you. Your creator absolutely loves you. Your creator absolutely loves you. It's, it's like my, that's, that's right, Dana, if you would, that's exactly what I feel my purpose is. I'm a messenger. And I've been, I have loved this material for 40, almost 40 years of my life. I love A Course in Miracles. It's a, it has helped me beyond anything I could possibly describe to you. And that's why I can tell you 40 years later, you will not get The Course in Miracles by just sitting around and analyzing The Course in Miracles and everyone uh, giving their opinion about what they think The Course in Miracles means. The way that The Course in Miracles will work is by you remembering what the, the Holy Spirit is telling you by remembering what this is saying, it's saying to you that even though you are confused, even though you are afraid, even though you spend your time focused on the body and illusions and everything else outside of you, even though you do that, the love in you, the Holy Spirit in you, is waiting patiently, absolutely certain about how this whole thing is going to turn out. And the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, also knows that you made a mad decision to focus all your attention on the outer and the physical, but you are still dear to God. You are still still totally and completely cherished by love. So when someone loves you, even if you are confused, they still are certain that you only deserve love and that in the end you're only going to have love. No matter what you're thinking about, no matter what you're going through right now, in the end, you're going to be happy. No matter what you're experiencing right now, no matter how you're using your energy right now, no matter what you're focusing your attention on right now in the world, you are still going to end up in total and complete happiness. You are still loved by God. You are still loved by the Creator. The Creator is certain of the outcome because the Creator is certain of the Creator. And the Creator knows that this mad decision that a person makes to try to free their body, to put all their focus on the body all the time to the expense of their spiritual awareness, that that person is still just as close to God and has just as much of God's love as anybody else, including me who thinks I'm studying and including you who think you're studying. You're still, and I'm still not going to receive any more of God's love than everybody else does who doesn't believe in any of this or who doesn't study any of this. They are still just as much loved by God. They're still just as much cherished by God as everybody who's trying to be spiritual and study and meditate and read. Because the Course says even in the person's confusion, even while they're focusing all their attention on freeing the body, they are still, still, loved completely 100% by the Creator, that they are loved completely and totally. That was paragraph two. That was paragraph two. So let's hammer that in. Take a breath. Where the freedom of the body has been chosen. Where freedom of the body has been chosen. Where freedom of the body has been chosen. Where the freedom of the body has been chosen. The mind is used as the means whose value lies in the mind's ability 
to contrive ways to achieve the body's freedom. When a person wants freedom of the mind, when a person wants freedom of the body, when a person is only focused on the physical and the material, they are always stop using your mind to only figure out ways to free your body. Stop using your mind to only focus on your body and what your body needs. Stop using the mind to only focus on the body's freedom. Stop using your mind to only focus on the body's freedom. Stop using your mind to only focus on your body's freedom. Stop using your mind to only focus on your body's freedom. Use your body to free your mind. 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 I use my body to free my mind. I use my body to free my mind. I use my body to free my mind. I use the body to free the mind. I use the body to free the mind. I use the body to free the mind. You use the body to free your mind. You use your body to free your mind. Let's say it. I use my body to free my mind. I use the body to free the mind. I use the body to free the mind. I use the body to free the spirit. 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 So I hope when I'm doing the chanting and the affirmations that at some point you join in with me so that you can give yourself the experience, so you can give yourself the experience of this in a new way. So the Course in Miracles says in the third paragraph, so we're on page, what page are we on? We are in the third paragraph, and we are on page 480, and we're going into page 481. So we're going to do paragraph three, paragraph three. This is Hardcore Course in Miracles, so I know that <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you about me though. This is this is absolutely the thing that I enjoy the most. This book is so deep, but most of the time people don't get a chance to hear it. They don't hear it. So I see my function is how can I bring this book to life? So I'm I'm gonna go through the paragraph. Chapter twenty two, section six, paragraph three. Be not disturbed, be not disturbed at all. Be not disturbed at all to think how the Holy Spirit can change the role of means and end so easily in what God loves and would have free forever. What does this, this say? First of all, it said, don't be disturbed. Don't be disturbed by what? By trying to think about how God is going to change the role of means and end so easily. In other words, don't be disturbed by trying to figure out how God is going to do this. Stop being disturbed by trying to figure out how God is going to change everything that, that would free you. Stop trying to think about how God is going to free you. Stop thinking about how God is going to free you forever. The Course in Miracles says, Be not disturbed at all to learn how Holy Spirit can change the role of means and end so easily in what God loves and would have free forever. So who are you? You are the one God loves and wants to be free forever. God loves you and wants you to be forever free. Your creator loves you and wants you to be free forever. Your creator, your creator, God, God, your creator loves you and wants you to be free from now on. God wants you to be free from now on. God wants you to be free from now on. God is love. So you could say, love wants you to be free forever. Someone who loves you wants you to be free forever. Anyone or anything that really loves you 
wants you to be free and wants you to be free all the time. Someone who loves you wants you to be free. Love wants you to be free forever. Be not disturbed at all to think how Holy Spirit can change the role of means and end so easily, so easily in you what God loves and would have free forever. So what is your job? So that, what is the instruction? The first instruction is don't be disturbed by constantly thinking how God is going to pull this off. That's paraphrasing. The next thing it says is God wants you to be free forever. God loves you. Your creator loves you. Love loves you and it wants you to be free forever. Then it says, but be you rather grateful. Be you rather grateful that you can be the means to serve God's goal or end. So, so what is that telling me? Then Rather than trying to figure out how God is going to do this, rather than trying to figure out how God is going to free me, rather than try to figure out what God is going to do, what I need to do is stop being disturbed by not knowing how God is going to pull this off. Then I need to be grateful that I can be mean, the means to serve God's end. In other words, I need to be grateful that God can use me. I need to be grateful that God can use me and I need to stop being disturbed because I don't know how God is going to heal me and pull it, my happiness off. I don't, okay, I'm going to stop being disturbed because I don't know how God is going to do this. And I'm always trying to figure out how my happiness is going to happen. I'm always trying to figure out how my happiness is going to happen and how God is going to make me happy. And the Courts and Miracles are saying stop trying to figure out how God is going to make you happy. Stop trying to figure out how the universe is going to make you happy. Just be grateful that you have a role to play. Just be grateful that you can be used by God. Be grateful that love can use you. Be grateful that love can use you. Be grateful that you can serve the cause of love and don't worry about how it's going to happen. Don't worry about how you are going to change to being the kind of person that's always trying to use your body to free your mind. Stop being so concerned about how you're going to change, how God is going to change your mind. What you should do is be grateful that you can be the means to serve God. Be grateful that you can be the means to serve love. So how do you serve God? How do you serve love? How do you serve God? It says to, I love it, it says, Be you rather grateful that you can be the means to serve God's goal, which is in. Be what? Be grateful you can be a way that God serves God's goal. Because this is the only service that leads to freedom. Okay, what is the only service that a person can do that will really free them? What is the thing that you can do that, what is the one thing you can do that will free you? What is the one thing that you can do that will free you? What is the one thing that you can do that leads to freedom? What is the only service that you can render that leads to freedom? So let's go back. First, you were told, be not disturbed at all to think how he can change the role of means and ends so easily in what God loves and would have free forever. So th what is that saying? Don't be disturbed by trying to think of how God is going to take care of this and do this. What should you do? It says, what I want you to do is to be grateful that you can serve me. God is saying, I want you to be grateful that you can serve love. That is, that's, what, that's what the Creator is saying. You know what? I want y'all to be grateful. Stop trying to figure out how I'm going to handle everything. And I'm not talking about God as a man in the sky, but as an infinitely intelligent love that created us. And it's saying to us, this book has the audacity to tell us, you, 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 you don't have the capacity to know exactly how God is going to change the roles so that the roles that you play only benefit you. Listen, you need to stop being disturbed because you don't know how the universe is going to heal your life. Stop being disturbed by trying to think of how the universe is going to solve your problems or serve or heal your life. What I really want you to do, the Creator says, what I really want you to do is know that I love you and I want you to be free forever. I love you and I want you to be free forever. Stop trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. And I want you to know that I love you and I want you to know that I want you to be free forever. 
And I want you to be grateful that you can be a means to serve my goal of love. I want you to be glad that I can use you. That's what love is saying to us. That's what the Creator is saying to us. Stop trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. What I really want you to do is know that I want you to know that I love you. And I want you to know I want you to be free forever. And I want you to be grateful that you can be the means to serve my purpose. That's what love says to us. That's what God says to us. That's what the Creator says to us. I want you to be grateful that I can use you. I want you to be grateful that love can use you. I want you to be grateful that love can use you rather than trying to spend all your time trying to figure out how God is going to do God's healing work. This is the only service that leads to freedom. This is the only service that will lead to freedom. Allowing yourself to be a means for love is the only service that will lead to freedom. To serve this end, what do you do? To serve God's purpose, to serve love's purpose, what do you do? It says, to serve this end, the body must be perceived as sinless. So in order to be free, then to render a service that leads to freedom is for me to see your body as sinless, to see your body as sinless. I, 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 if I want to be free, I have to see the body as without sin. If I want to be free, I have to see the body as without sin or guilt. I have to see the body as innocent. I need to see the body as neutral or see the body as innocent. If I ever want to be free, if you ever want to be free, if you ever want to be free, if you want to be used by God, if you want to be used in the service of love, all you have to do is see the body as sinless. Do not see the body as bad. Do not see the body as bad. Do not see the body as sinful. Do not see the body as sinful. Do not see the body as bad. Do not see the body as guilty. Do not see the body as guilty. Do not see the body as guilty. Do not see the body as sinful. Do not see the body as sinful. See the body as sinless. See the body as sinless. See the body as innocent. To free yourself, to free yourself, to free yourself, see the body as innocent. See the body as sinless. It says right here in paragraph 3, Be you rather grateful that you can be the means to serve God's end. Right there on the page. What do, you, what I, what do I want you to do? I want you to be grateful that you can be the means to serve me. This is what it's saying. I want you to be grateful that you can be the means to serve love. This is the only service that leads to freedom. What is the only service that leads to freedom? The only service that leads to freedom is to serve God. And to serve God, that means that you want to be able to see the body as sinless, to see the body as innocent, because the goal is sinlessness. The goal is innocence. The goal is to see yourself without sin. The goal is to see yourself without guilt. The goal is to see yourself without separation. The goal is ultimately to see yourself without the body. The goal is innocence. The goal is to see innocence. The goal is to see love. The goal is to see innocence and love. <sighs> to do that, it says the body must be perceived as sinless. Because the goal is sinlessness. The goal is sinlessness. The lack of contradiction. The lack of contradiction makes the soft transition. What do you mean? I now only see the body as sinless. I, I do not see the body as guilty or bad and good. I no longer see the body as bad and good. I no longer see the body as innocent and guilty. I no longer see the body as sinful and innocent. There is no contradiction. So that makes the soft transition from means to end as easy as the shift from hate to gratitude before forgiving eyes. When you forgive, your hate turns to gratitude. If your hate has not turned to gratitude, then you have not forgiven. Forgi and before forgiving eyes, hate changes to gratitude. Who you used to hate, now you're grateful to them. When you forgive what you used to hate, you will feel grateful for. The being, the person you used to hate, when you truly forgive, will be a person that you feel grateful for before forgiving eyes. Now, if you don't have forgiving eyes, what I just said sounds like a bunch of crap because you know that you don't feel gratitude for the person that you hate. 
which means you haven't forgiven them yet. If you haven't correctly perceived them yet. To forgive means to correctly perceive. So you haven't correctly perceived someone if you feel hate for them or grievances for them instead of gratitude. Where there is no gratitude, there is a grievance. Wherever there is not gratitude, there is a grievance. You will be sanctified. It says in the next sentence, you will be sanctified by your brother. So you're going to be sanctified by me. I'm going to be sanctified by you. What does it mean to be sanctified? What does it mean to be sanctified? It says in the next part of the sentence, using your body only to serve the sinless. So me being sanctified by you means that you are just going to use your body to serve my innocence. I'm going to just use my body to serve your sinlessness, and you're going to use your body to serve my sinlessness. What does that mean? I'm going to use my body to remind you that you're innocent. You may make mistakes because you're confused, but the truth is, the truth is, you are innocent. You are innocent even if you make mistakes. You are innocent. Even if you make mistakes, you are innocent. You are innocent. And it will be impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. What does that mean? Uh, there are many people who hate their bodies. There are lots of people who hate their bodies. There are many people who do not love their bodies. They judge their bodies, they criticize their bodies, they think their bodies are not pretty enough, smart enough, strong enough, young enough. Uh, there are people that hate being their bodies. So the Course in Miracles says there's a part of you that, that has hated the body. And it would be impossible for you to, to hate what serves whom you would heal. In other words, I want you to be healed. I know now that my function is to be a means for you to be healed by seeing you as innocent. I know that my function is to help heal you by seeing you as innocent and that I have to use my body to serve that goal. I have to use my body to say loving things. I have to use my body to say helpful, loving things. So, therefore, I will not hate my body. You will not hate your body when you're using your body correctly. You will not hate the body when you're using it correctly. You will not hate your body when you're using it correctly. And you're using your body correctly when you're using your body to heal. You are using your body correctly when you're using your body to heal. And of course, in Miracle says to heal is to undo fear. So whenever you're using your body to help undo fear, then you are not hating your body. You are loving your body. A person is loving their body when they use their body to serve the sinless. When, a, when I'm using my body to serve you, when I'm using my body to truly help you, then it's impossible for me to hate my body. I can't hate a body that's serving whom I would heal. That's what that line says. It will be impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. How can I hate my, how can I hate in, anything that is serving, anything in my life that I'm using for service is something that I cannot hate. I'm, I'm going to appreciate my house if I'm using my house as a means to serve love. I'm going to love my car if I'm using my car as a means to serve love. I'm going to love anything that I use as a means to heal and serve you. It is impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. That was paragraph three. Paragraph three. Whew. Paragraph three. Let's, let's hear a little, a little review right now. Be not disturbed at all to think how the Holy Spirit can change the role of means and end so easily, 
in what God loves and would have free forever. God would have you free forever. But be you rather grateful. Be you rather grateful that you can be the means to serve God's end. Be you grateful that you can be the means to serve God's goal. Be grateful that you can be the means to serve God. Be grateful that you can be the means to serve love, to serve love, to serve love. This is the only service that leads to freedom. Serving God is the only service that leads to freedom. To serve this end, to serve love, the body must be perceived as sinless. 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 Your goal is sinlessness. Your goal is sinlessness. Say it to myself. My goal is sinlessness. My goal is sinlessness. My goal is sinlessness. My goal is sinlessness. Your goal is innocence. Your goal is innocence. Say it to yourself. My goal is innocence. My goal is innocence. My goal is innocence. My goal is innocence. Do you know the lack of contradiction makes the soft transition from means to end as easy as the shift from hate to gratitude before forgiving as hate turns to gratitude when you've really forgiven? Hate turns to gratitude. That's how you can know when you have truly forgiven someone or something. When you feel grateful, that's when you know you have forgiven. When you feel grateful, you know you have forgiven. When you feel grateful for what you used to hate. When you feel real grateful for what you used to hate. When you feel grateful for who you used to hate. When you feel grateful for who you used to fear. When you feel grateful for who you used to fear. When you feel grateful for who you used to fear. When you feel grateful to who you used to be angry at. That's how you know you have forgiven. When you feel gratitude for who you used to have grievances with, that's how you know when you have really forgiven. Great hate will turn to gratitude before forgiving eyes. I say hate will change to gratitude before, before forgiving eyes. Now you're going to be sanctified by your brother. It's time for you to be sanctified. Now how do you how do you, how are you sanctified? You are sanctified by someone else using their body to serve your innocence. You will be sanctified by your brother using your body only to serve the sinless. Use your body only to, to serve the innocent and it will be impossible for you to hate. Remember, it's impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. It will be impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. It will be impossible for you to hate your body that serves whom you would heal. It's impossible to hate your body. When you're using your body to serve, you can't hate your body. If you're using your body to serve innocence, if you're using your body to serve love, then you cannot hate your body. So a person that hates their body is a person who's not using their body to heal. That's a person that's not using their body to serve the sinless, according to the Course. It will be impossible for you to hate what serves whom you would heal. Mm. Some of the comments I see. Sin not as your father sins not. Be you therefore perfect. That's what Greg says. Diana says, hate turns into gratitude. That's how you'll know when you've forgiven. 
Lisa says, love served up hot, fresh, and warm, like sweet, sticky buns, and so delish. That's right. That is so beautiful. I feel grateful for how and what I used to hate and fear. Renew says, wow, teacher. Lisa says, feeling grateful. Then another comment is, sanctified by my brother. Another comment, I accept my innocence. Innocent am I. Yes, yes, yes. Greg says, uh, I'm using my body for love. Woo! This is so awesome. This is so awesome. Y'all hanging in there so beautifully with me. Don't forget to share these videos and like my page, Earl Purdy page on Facebook. This is Facebook Live. So, let's look at paragraph four. Paragraph four. Paragraph four. Chapter 22, section six, paragraph four. This holy relationship, this holy relationship, this loving relationship, this healing relationship, this beautiful relationship, this innocent relationship, these are all Course in Miracles definitions for the word holy. This holy relationship, this loving relationship is lovely in its innocence, mighty in strength, and blazing with a light far greater than the sun that lights the sky you see. This holy relationship is chosen of your Father, of your Creator, as a means for your Creator's own plan. So what did that just say? Uh, God is going to give you a relationship. It's called a holy relationship. The holy relationship is lovely in its innocence. So God is going to, as part of God's plan, we're going to have holy relationships. And these are relationships that are innocent and lovely. These are, a holy relationship is a relationship that is mighty in its strength. A holy relationship is a relationship that's blazing with the light and love of God, far brighter than the sun that lights the sky you see. That's going to be the kind of relationship that your creator has chosen as a means for your creator's plan. So God's plan, God's plan is that you have a relationship that's lovely, innocent, mighty, strong, and blazing with light and love. Part of God's plan is that you have a holy relationship, that you have a holy relationship. Part of God's plan is that you have a holy relationship. And the holy relationship is a relationship that's innocent, that's lovely, that's mighty in its strength. A holy relationship is a relationship that's blazing with a light far brighter than the sun that you see in the sky. It says this holy relationship is chosen of God as a means for God's own plan. So be thankful that a holy relationship doesn't serve your plan at all. Be thankful that a real relationship doesn't serve your ego at all. A real relationship doesn't serve your ego at all. Be thankful that it serves yours not at all. Be glad that God's relationship doesn't serve your plans at all. Be glad that a real relationship doesn't serve the plans of your ego, your fear at all. The Course in Miracles says this holy relationship, this healed relationship, lovely in its innocence, mighty in its strength, blazing with a light far brighter than the sun that lights the sky that you see. That's the relationship that's chosen of your father as a means for your father's own plan. The holy relationship is chosen of your father as a means for your father's own plan for your happiness. A holy relationship is chosen of your creator as a means for its own plan. The loving relationship is chosen of your creator as a means for its own plan. So the, the creator's plan is that you have a holy relationship. The creator's plan is that you have a loving relationship. The creator's plan is that you have an innocent relationship that's absolutely lovely. Uh, it's the Creator's plan that you have a relationship that is strong, that you have a relationship that is mighty. It is part of the Creator's plan that you have a relationship that's blazing with light and love and truth far brighter than the sun that lights up the sky that you see, that this is chosen of your Father as a means for your Father's own plan. There, there it is right there, paragraph 4, section 6. Chapter 22 in the Foundation for Inner Peace version of the Course. I'm not making this up. I'm not analyzing the Course. What I'm doing is sharing with you what the Course is saying. That the holy relationship 
is a relationship that's lovely in its innocence, mighty in its strength, and blazing with a light far brighter than the sun that lights the sky you see is chosen of God, of love, as a means for its own plan. So what is your job? What is your job? Your job is to be thankful that it serves yours, not at all. Be glad that, that the relationships that come to you from love do not serve your plans at all. Your plan for specialness, your plan for that's fearful, your plan that has to do with focusing in on separation in the body. Be thankful that, that a holy relationship cannot be used for guilt, that a holy relationship cannot be used for fear. A holy relationship can never be used for anger and vengeance. Be thankful that it serves yours not at all. Nothing entrusted to a holy relationship can be misused. A real, when you're in a real relationship, there is nothing in a real relationship that's misused. You could never be misused in a real relationship. You could never be, you could never be misused. Nothing entrusted to a holy relationship can be misused. There is no way that you could be misused if you're in a holy relationship, if you're in a real relationship, if you're in an innocent relationship. If you're in a relationship chosen for you by God, you cannot be misused and nothing given it but will be used. So what does that mean? It means when you're in a holy relationship, everything that's given to your relationship will be used for God's purposes. Nothing given a holy relationship but will be used. For love, because don't forget that God's purpose is sinlessness, God's purpose is freedom, God's purpose is love. So when you're in a holy relationship, everything given to that relationship is going to be used for your freedom. Everything given in that relationship, everything that happens in that relationship, everything that happens in that relationship is going to be used for your own best interest when you're in a holy relationship. When you're in a real relationship, nothing can be misused in a real relationship. If you're in a real relationship, you cannot be misused. If you're in a real relationship, if you're in a real relationship, if you're in a holy relationship, nothing entrusted to it can be misused. It's right there on the page. I'm not making this up. Nothing entrusted to it can be misused and nothing given it but will be used. This holy relationship between two people or this holy relationship, which is a, this loving relationship, this innocent relationship, this real relationship, this beautiful relationship. These are all Course in Miracles definitions of the word holy. This loving relationship your holy relationship has the power to heal all pain. So when you're in a real relationship, when we get into real relationships, when we use the body to free the mind, when we're in the kind of relationship that God wants to give us, then the relationship itself will have the power to heal all pain. It's right there on the page. When you're in a truly loving relationship, it's no pain in a truly loving relationship. In a truly loving relationship, all pain is healed. So when you're in a really loving relationship, it heals your pain. It heals your pain. A real relationship never causes you pain. A real relationship never causes you pain. A real relationship has the, the power to heal any pain. A real relationship, a holy relationship, an innocent relationship has the power to heal all pain regardless of its form. I don't care what kind of pain that you're going through. If you're in a real, truly loving relationship... It will heal you of all pain regardless of the form or appearance of the pain. A holy relationship has the power to heal all pain. A, holy, a truly holy relationship, a truly loving relationship, a truly real relationship has the power to heal all pain regardless of the pain's form. It doesn't matter what kind of pain it is, a real relationship has the power to heal all pain. Regardless of the form. I don't care what kind of pain you tell me you're going through. If you are in a real relationship, if you allow yourself to have God give you a holy relationship because it's part of God's plan, because you're willing to choose for freedom of the mind instead of freedom of the body, then you will be given a relationship when you choose the freedom of your spirit and the freedom of your mind above the freedom of the body, then you'll stop hating your body. You'll start seeing the body as sinless. Uh, you'll start loving it because it's helping you heal those that you love. A holy relationship is a relationship that's innocent and loving and mighty and strong. And that's the relationship that's been chosen by God as a means for God's own plan for your happiness. You need to be thankful 
that uh, God's plan doesn't serve your plan and also realize that there's nothing that could be entrusted to this relationship that could be misused. There's no way you can be misused in a real relationship, in a real loving relationship, in a real holy relationship. There's no way you can go through pain because a real relationship heals all pain, regardless of the form of the pain. And neither nor you nor your brother can serve at alone can serve at all. You can't do this alone. What is being accomplished is accomplished through us joining, us joining minds, joining hearts. Neither you nor your brother alone can serve. I can't serve by myself. You can't serve by yourself. We serve together. We serve what? We serve the cause of recognizing each other's sinlessness. We, we serve the cause of seeing the body as sinless. We serve the cause of wanting to free the mind over the body. We serve the cause of being grateful that we don't know how God is going to create the kind of happy life that we deserve to have. We're grateful that we can be a means for God to bring love and truth into the world. Uh, it's only in your joint healing only in your joint will does healing lie. It says in paragraph 4, only in your joint will does healing lie. So you and I joining together on the idea of truth. You and I joining together on the idea of oneness. You and I joining together on the idea of love. That's where healing is located. Healing is located in us joining, us coming together for a common purpose of seeing each other's innocence and seeing each other's sinlessness. And it says, for here your healing is. It is in what? In your joint will. Us joining together with the same purpose. The Course in Miracles says that's where healing is located. That's where your healing is located. And it is here that you will accept atonement. The Course in Miracles defines atonement as the undoing of fear. The undoing of guilt. So, when you and I join on the idea of healing then we are going to be healed because we are accepting the undoing of fear. And to accept the undoing of fear, we have to want to use our bodies to see each other as sinless and see each other as innocent. And we have to also be willing to use our bodies to free our minds. If you would do that and you would join with someone on doing that, that's accepting atonement. That's accepting your healing. And then the last sentence says, and in healing is the sonship healed. In your healing is the sonship healed. In your healing is everybody healed. When you are healed, everybody's going to be healed. When you are truly loving and loved, then everybody's going to be loving and loved. When you are free, then everybody's going to be free. It's in your healing that the whole sonship is healed because when my mind joins with your mind, when my will joins with your will, and we both want to see each other as innocent and sinless, and we want to use our body to see each other as innocent and sinless, then, then you will be healed and I will be healed, and our relationship will have the power to heal all pain, regardless of its form. That is a heck of a promise. But it said God was going to give us the holy relationship. The Creator is going to give you the holy relationship. Your job is to be grateful that you can be a means to serve love, that you can be a means to serve the Creator's purpose. Whoo! Take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath, take a breath. All right, mighty companion. I'm going to do a quick recap of this last powerful paragraph. But first, I'd like to thank you so much for doing Hardcore Course in Miracles with me. And I'm also going to be doing a Hardcore Course in Miracles workshop soon, very soon. And I want you to email me at earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com to let me know that you are interested in taking part with me in a Hardcore Course in Miracles workshop, which can also be done online as well as in person. But I want to see how much interest there is in it. So make sure you email me at earlpurdy at earlpurdy.com. My email is my name, earlpurdy at earlpurdy, P-U-R-D-Y dot com. And let me know that you would be interested in taking part 
in a hardcore Course in Miracles workshop. Okay. Also, I want to ask you to look deep inside of you, and if you feel so moved, please make a financial expression of appreciation. I'm a full-time teacher of God, and I want to thank you for those of you who are willing to be channels financially to allow me and my teaching ministry to continue. Thanks for valuing it enough to support it. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. If you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, go to my website, EarlPurdy, P-U-R-D-Y dot com, EarlPurdy dot com. I'm available to work with on a one-on-one -on -one to give clarity to the Course in Miracles, the way of mastery, and a clarity to your purpose and why you're on the planet and how you can adapt and use these principles in your everyday life to create more peace for you. And I'm also an astrologer and a numerologist. It's also been part of my learning that Holy Spirit has given me. And, and I will work with you, and it's called a clarity session. Go to my website www.earlpurdy.com and you can find out in detail about my services. I'm here only to be truly helpful. I'm on Facebook Live on Thursday nights doing Hardcore Course in Miracles at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. On Sundays I do a Course in Miracles class at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. And on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. I do a class called The Way of Mastery at 7 p.m. Mountain Time. Just go to www.facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy Live to watch the videos. And you don't have to be a member of Facebook. Go to www.facebook.com forward slash Earl Purdy Live. And you can tune into these live broadcasts. I thank you for coming online live and interacting live as well as watching it the replays. There's an energy of the tribe that comes together when we are here live and I look at all of your comments and, and I see them as I'm teaching and it motivates me and it moves me. But remember, remember that the answer to the course, the beauty of the course, the miracles of the course come through using the ideas regardless of your reaction to them and listening and hearing what we're being told. Because we were just told about what a holy relationship is like, which is a relationship where you are dedicated to using your body to serve this innocence in each other and the sinlessness in each other. So this is paragraph four. This holy relationship, your real relationship, that has been chosen of God, as a means for God's plan. This is a relationship that is absolutely lovely in its innocence. A real relationship is innocent. A real relationship is innocent and lovely and lovely and innocent. A real relationship, a holy relationship is loving and it's innocent and it's innocent and it's loving. A real relationship given you by God, a real relationship given to you by God is a relationship that is mighty and a relationship that is strong, a relationship that's mighty and strong, a relationship that's a holy relationship, a relationship that comes to you through love and God is a relationship that has a light and a truth and a love that's far brighter than the sun that lights the sky that you see. That's the kind of relationship that's chosen of your father as a means for its own plan. Listen to what I'm saying. Love wants you to experience a relationship that is innocent and mighty and strong and blazing with the light of love and truth. So be glad that a real relationship doesn't serve your ego at all. Be glad that, it, that a real relationship is not based on any kind of guilt or fear or just trying to free the body instead of trying to free the innocence in you. Remember this. Nothing entrusted to your holy relationship can be misused. If it's a real relationship, it cannot...
cause you to be misused in any way. You cannot be misused in a real relationship, in a holy relationship. You cannot be misused. Nothing entrusted to a holy relationship can be misused. Nothing entrusted to a truly loving relationship can be misused. Everything in a real loving relationship is something that's going to be used to bring your joy and peace and happiness. In a real relationship, everything that's given to a real relationship is going to be used as a purpose for God. Anything that's real is going to be used for love. If it's real and your relationship is real, it's going to be used for love. Nothing entrusted to it can be misused. This holy relationship, when you're in a holy relationship, when you're in a real relationship, a real relation, a real relationship has the power to heal all pain. When you're in a real relationship, all pain ends in a real relationship. 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 Regardless of the form of the pain, when you are in a holy relationship, it has the power to heal all pain. All pain. All pain. All pain. The holy relationship has the power to heal all pain. The real relationship has the power to heal all pain, regardless of its form. So now you know what the goal is. The goal is to move closer and closer to allowing yourself to have the holy relationship that God wants you to have, that God will provide for you as part of God's own plan, part of God's own plan. Did you hear what the Course in Miracles says? It says that the holy relationship has been chosen by your father as the means to carry out your father's plan of love, that you and your brother can't do it alone. It's only in your joint will does healing lie. We've got to agree on this, that we, to, that we want to see each other as innocent and sinless and guiltless. It's in our joint will that healing lies, because here we accept the atonement. And to accept the atonement is to accept the undoing of fear. To accept atonement is to accept the end of your guilt. To accept the atonement is to accept your sinlessness. To accept atonement is to accept your innocence because in your healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In your healing, everyone is healed. Say it. In my healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In your healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In your healing, everyone is healed. In my healing, everyone is healed. In your healing, everyone is healed. In our healing, everyone is healed. Woo, listen to this over and over and over and over and over again. That the beginning vocal, that was my brother John Christmas at johnchristmas.com with the vocals. I'm Earl Purdy. This was an awesome hardcore course in miracles gathering this evening. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you benefited from it and I hope it was helpful to you. Because I'm only here to be truly helpful. I'm here to represent him, love, who sent me. I don't know what to say, I may not know what to do, but him who sent me, God who sent me, will direct me. I will be healed as I let God teach me to heal. And I want you to know that do you want freedom of the body or do you want freedom of the mind? Be grateful that you can be the means to serve love's purpose. I love you. I love you. I love you. See you next time.